This is a demonstration of how to measure pinion flange runout for use in diagnosing first order propeller shaft related vibrations. Uh, if you recall, first order vibrations are vibrations that create one shake per revolution of a device and are a fairly common uh, type of vibration. First order vibrations are typically caused by something that is out of round, like a pinion flange or a propeller shaft, <coughs> um, transmission output shaft, transfer case output shaft, and so on. Anything that spins, uh, well, anything that rotates um, can be out of round. Um, there also um, can be a problem with being out of balance but you always want to check for out of round first before you worry about being out of balance. Now a word about balancing, um, when you try to balance something it can only balance out the first order vibrations which are one shake per revolution of a component. So don't try to balance something that's giving you more than one shake per revolution because that's not the problem. So for first order vibrations uh, that are propeller shaft speed related, and we can have engine speed related and tire speed related uh, also, um, one of the checks is to measure the pinion flange lateral runout. And right now I've got a dial indicator with a uh, wide tip uh, plunger, or wide tip uh, contact tip on, on the tip of it here instead of the pointed uh, tip that the dial indicator came with. Um, and I'm, the lateral run out is the, the run out on this surface right here on the flange as it rotates. Uh, a little bit later we're going to do the, the vertical run out which is this hole inside of here that the propeller shaft centers itself in. So the specification in uh, the service information for this particular vehicle, this is a 2007 Toyota Tundra, uh, says that there can be no more than four thousandths of an inch uh, lateral runout. So this cannot wobble back and forth by more than four thousandths of an inch. Well why would it ever be more than four thousandths of an inch? Well some technicians to remove this flange to replace a pinion seal or other type of service work might use a hammer to pound on the back of this to get it off. Well, if you pound on the back of this, you can cause more than four thousandths run out. I've seen it many times. And that can, that can cause, it doesn't mean it will, but it can cause a first order propeller shaft speed related vibration. So the, we've, got, we've got to measure that. Uh, on this surface here, as you can see, there's some surface rust and there's, then there's some clean areas where the uh, pinion flange, uh, part of the uh, yoke of the propeller shaft, uh, was seated and um, preventing the rust buildup. And right now, let me zoom in here so you can see, I've got the plunger sitting on a clean spot where there's no rust. And I've also zeroed the uh, dial indicator uh, at that point. And what we are looking at, once again, uh, we're looking for uh, anything more than four thousandths of an inch uh, run out. Uh, this dial indicator, uh, every little tiny mark is half of one thousandth or five ten thousandths of an inch. Each of the uh, medium sized marks is one thousandth of an inch and the larger marks with the numbers are five thousandths of an inch. So we're starting at zero. I'm just going to put a ratchet on here with the the socket and start rotating the, the pinion flange and we're looking for anything more than four thousandths of an inch. Now I did not clean off that surface rust and although I might uh, if I read more than four thousandths of an inch. There, there's no point in cleaning it off if we read less than four thousandths of an inch and so far we have not exceeded four thousandths of an inch. Almost back to where we started. Right there is where we started. So we got up to 
three and a half or so thousandths of an inch um, of ru lateral runout, but I believe that that's due to this surface rust here. And as long as it's within the specification, uh, who cares if it has the surface rust on there, as long as it's not interfering with the, the yoke of the propeller shaft uh, bolting up uh, to here. So that lateral runout measurement that we just did uh, is within specification. Now next, we're going to set the dial indicator up to measure this inside bore uh, runout. So we're going to uh, pause here for a moment. Okay, to measure the inside bore uh, runout, uh, the vertical runout as Toyota calls it, um, I need a dial indicator uh, that has this, uh, I call it a, a teeter-totter type adapter. It, it's it's an inside hole measuring adapter, but it has a one-to-one -one ratio uh, as far as its length is concerned. And then we take the dial indicator and put it into this adapter with the little teeter-totter part on it. So it looks just like this. And when I come over here and push down here, however far I push down on this side right here, it will push up on the dial indicator on the other side. And so this is, works really good for sticking this end of the uh, tool down into a hole to measure a runout. So I'm going to get that set up and then um, we'll use it to. Uh, measure this run out. Okay, I've got this uh, dial indicator with the little uh, teeter-totter adapter uh, connected to it. Um, in, with that little adapter inside of this uh, center hole here on the pinion flange and the specification for its uh, out of round or run out is four thousandths of an inch. So let me zoom in here so you can see the dial indicator. There we go. I'm going to rotate this by hand and we'll see if we end up with anything more than four thousandths of an inch. Uh, typically this should be zero. Um, the only reason it would not be zero is if uh, there was some sort of damage. Um, I've seen damage to the pinion gear itself to where the shaft of the pinion gear was bent because of an accident that the vehicle had been in. Uh, the truck had been rear-ended. It smashed the rear axle into the propeller shaft and bent it. It also had bent the pinion gear itself. You'll notice that there's just nothing. There's no movement there on that uh, centered um, hole. So we've got zero uh, run out, and that's what the propeller shaft is supposed to be centered in. Um, which is uh, absolutely uh, perfect. That's how, how we want it. And this same type of flange is on the back of uh, many automatic transmissions and uh, transfer cases, um, front axles, um, and so on. Now, not uh, every manufacturer has this nice flat flange to take your measurements on. Um, Many of them have a U-joint uh, flange that is an irregular shape. And so next I'm going to show you how to measure the runout uh, on one of those. Okay, uh, I told you I'd show you how to measure pinion flange runout on a different style of pinion flange. And I'm sure that uh, most of you recognize this style of pinion flange. I've got an axle uh, here on a stand that we use for training and we've got this pinion flange here that does not have a nice flat surface uh, to measure a run out with. And this is a General Motors axle. Um, there are uh, Dodge and Chrysler, uh, Ford and uh, other uh, axles that use this style of pinion flange uh, also. Um, there is a way to measure pinion flange run out. Uh, there, there's actually two ways. Um, the, the easiest way and the least expensive way is to bolt the propeller shaft up to this flange, measure the run out of the propeller shaft, mark the high spot and the low spot, 
unbolt it from this flange, rotate it half a turn, bolt it back up, and remeasure the high spot and the low spot of your uh, propeller shaft run out. Um, if the run out moved the half a turn with the rotation of the propeller shaft, um, the high spot of your run out, then the propeller shaft has the run out. If the high spot of the run out uh, stayed in relation to the pinion flange when you rotated the propeller shaft and then the pinion flange has excessive run out. But there is also a special tool, of course. This uh, special tool here, it looks like a U-joint, uh, except it, obviously it's not. It actually has a nice machine surface down inside of the tool itself. Now this tool is from Kentmore Tools. Uh, it's very expensive, it's about $500. Um, it was a required tool for dealerships, and it's available for anybody else to purchase, but like I said, it, uh, it's a, <laughs> that's a lot of money, and you can tell uh, just by rotating the propeller shaft and double-checking its run out uh, if the propeller shaft or the <coughs> pinion flange uh, has excessive run out. But I want to show you how to use this uh, proper tool, because if you ever looked in service information, this is what you would use. This tool has different size um, fittings to fit in where the U-joint would go. It even has little sleeves for different sizes of U-joints. Um, this little sleeve comes off, that would fit inside, except it's too small, so you've got to put the sleeve on. Anyway, you, there are four different sizes of pinion flanges that this tool will fit. And so I picked the, the one should fit um, this one and I'm going to put the U-joint um, straps on. You have to strap this down just like it were a U-joint uh, and uh, then we will use the dial indicator with that inside bore measuring tool that I just showed you on the uh, Tundra uh, to measure the inside diameter. So I'm going to get this bolted down. Okay, I've got the tool bolted down with the U-joint U -joint straps, which, uh, by the way, as I was reading in service information, um, these straps are not reusable, uh, neither are the bolts. Um, I guess I've never bothered to read service information on those uh, bolts and straps, but it's been that way uh, for many, many years. Of course, everybody reuses them, but just be aware, it does say in service information that the straps and the bolts are not reusable. All right, so let me zoom in here and show you. There's an inside surface right here that's machined, and it's, it's machined on a kind of an arc. It's like a bowl on the inside. So it doesn't really matter if this little U-joint adapter tool is tilted one way or the other a little bit. We want it to be as, as flat, lined up with the surface of the flange, uh, as possible, but it does not have to be uh, perfect because of that machined uh, surface area. So now I'm going to get the dial indicator connected. Okay, I've got the dial indicator con uh, connected up. I've just got this little flexible rod uh, attachment and a vice grip attachment here on the, the other side of the uh, differential housing. I've got the little teeter-totter adapter on the dial indicator and we're reaching inside of this a special tool from uh, Kentmore Tools, um, which was bought out by Bosch. So now it's Bosch uh, Service Solutions. Um, so the General Motors specification for this axle says no more than ten thousandths of an inch uh, run out on the flange. So let me zoom in here. And we will rotate this thing around and see uh, how much run out uh, we have. Zero the dial indicator. We've, we, we're going to measure the run out. The maximum allowed is ten thousandths of an inch. So here we go. Keep from bumping the tool. Measuring on the inside. We're less than ten thousandths of an inch. Uh, as you can see, um, the, the
the instructions in the General Motors service information tell us that if there's more than ten thousandths of an inch, that we are to mark the relationship of the pinion flange to the pinion gear, uh, pull the flange off, rotate it 180 degrees, and then stick it back on, and then measure the run out again. And if the run out moved with the rotation of the flange, then the flange must be bad. If it didn't move with the rotation of the flange, then the pinion gear must be bent. Um, but this is a crush sleeve style axle, and crush sleeves are not reusable. Um, so it, that's, that's a lot of work to go through uh, to determine if you have a, a bent uh, flange. Now I have seen many times over the years uh, technicians hit the back of this flange with a hammer to, to remove it. Uh, where just a, a good steering wheel puller uh, will remove it. There's actually a GM special tool to re remove this also. But hitting this with a hammer uh, to remove it is not the, the approved way. And I have seen where there's been mushroomed over metal, they've hit it so hard, and using this tool, that's where it had excessive runout. And once again, this type of runout will create one shake per revolution of the propeller shaft or pinion flange, they all spin the same speed here. So the uh, not quite as tight of a tolerance uh, as that other axle I showed you since we had 10 thousandths of an inch maximum run out here. And this is what your propeller shaft has to bolt to. So if this had 10 thousandths of an inch run out, even if you had a perfect propeller shaft and bolt that up here, your propeller shaft automatically is going to have ten thousandths of an inch run out because of the run out of the flange. So we want to try to minimize the run out, of course, uh, of the flange, uh, replace it if it's been hit, um, so that the overall run out of the propeller shaft will be reduced. And of course, uh, the propeller shaft can be bolted up one of two ways. You can rotate it 180 degrees and bolt it back up with the U-joint. One way that it bolts up will have more run out than the other way. And out of the factory, they, they do match mount those. So they find the high spot of the run out of the pinion flange uh, and make a paint mark. And then they have the high spot of the propeller shaft marked also. And they put those uh, opposite of each other. And that's called match mounting. And that's why you should always mark the relationship of the pinion flange or transmission output uh, flange uh, to the propeller shaft.